Hey guys, I'm David from 3D Make It, and today we're going to be talking about installing AstroPrint onto a Raspberry Pi. Let's go! So before we get too far in, you're going to need a few things. And the first one, Raspberry Pi, all the power supplies that go with it, an SD card, um, and a webcam. So if you have all that stuff, we're ready to get started. So the next step is going to be downloading Bellinet Etcher. So we're going to head on over to that website. We'll download it. We'll get it installed. We've already done it on the channel once in a previous video that we'll link. Um, but it's a simple install. You run through it. Away we go. The next place we're going to head is the AstroPrint website. So once we're on the AstroPrint website, we're going to click the three hamburgers, the little hamburger in the corner here. Then we're going to go to Downloads, and it will take us to the page where we can actually get the image for our Raspberry Pi. So if you scroll down, there's a few ways we can buy an Astro Print box. Um, you can buy them pre-made. You can also make your own, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to scroll down, and we're going to go right down to the bottom where it says Raspberry Pi, and you can see that they support the 1, 2, 3, and 4. However, I will make a small note about that in a minute. So what we're going to do is just download the zip. It'll take a few seconds. Uh, you can choose to donate here if you want. Uh, you have to accept that it's for personal use uh, or that you've purchased a license. So the only restriction on the personal user side is the free account. You can have two printers. If you want more, you have to go up to the paid account and we can talk about what that costs in a minute. So we'll just hit download. So while that's downloading, let's talk AstroPrint. What is it? AstroPrint is a cloud control platform for your 3D printer. We've talked about how it has an online slicer in our other video and that's linked below. We've also talked about how OctoPrint can use AstroPrint as a plugin. So why would you want to go with the AstroPrint build for your Raspberry Pi rather than the OctoPrint plugin? Well, simply put, it makes it a little easier and things like the video stuff works better over the network. It also lets you get control over your Pi if you're on a controlled network by directly connecting it to the cloud so you don't have to worry about routing through firewalls or using any VPN remote services. I know the burning question is, well, which one is better, OctoPrint or AstroPrint? Well, they're both great. But here's the difference. AstroPrint is an out-of-the-box, easy-to-use solution that you don't have to tinker with much with. It gives you all the basic features that you need to get started, where OctoPrint lets you get under the hood and add all of those plugins and plugins and plugins. So if you're a person that wants granular control over how the printer works, then you're going to want to use OctoPrint. But for the average user and to get printing out of the box, AstroPrint is a great solution and it offers that cloud slicer that you just can't get away from. So our download finished for AstroPrint here. So we're just going to go into our folder. We'll just show in folder. And you can see that uh, once it's finished, you get a zip. So we just extract all and we hit extract. It'll take a few seconds to do that. But while it's doing the extraction, let's open Bellina. So click the start button and we're just going to type Bellina and there's Bellina Etcher. You might already have it open because you just installed it. So don't worry about it. We just need it open. So the next thing is we're going to take the SD card and we're going to plug it into an SD card reader. I have my little one here. And so we're just going to plug it into our computer and Bellina will automatically pick that up as a target and you can see that it changed. Keep in mind that everything you have on that SD card is going to be erased and replaced with Astro Print. Um, if you need to save that data, use a different SD card. For instance, this Raspberry Pi is actually running OctoPrint right now, so I'm just going to take the SD card out and I'm going to put it aside and save it so that when I'm done uh, using my AstroBox, I can switch right back. It's simple. So the next step is we're just going to hit Select Image. And we can see that our extract has finished. Here's the folder. And it comes to this AstroBox RPI image. So we select that. 
And now in the etcher, it will let us choose a device, but it's already auto detected. Make sure you pick the right one if you have USB keys or external hard drives plugged in, because you don't want to write it to something that you're going to regret later. Uh, and then we hit flash. If you get the command prompt prompt, it's just asking to run it as administrator, which is fine. It has to. So you just click yes. So while that process is going, let me tell you one more gotcha. You're going to need one of these, a network cable, and you're going to want to plug that into a router somewhere. If you don't have a network cable, you're going to need a USB Wi-Fi adapter that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. These are abundant on the internet. I'll throw a few in the description, but the Astro Box gateway requires a network connection to set itself up, and it will broadcast itself as a hub to Wi-Fi if you set it up but it's going to need two interfaces. So it'll use one to broadcast the Wi-Fi and one so that you can configure your Wi-Fi on its end to join. So you're gonna to wanna to either have a extra USB Wi-Fi dongle or on the cheaps, temporarily a network cable because as soon as you configure it, you can unplug the network and just use your Wi-Fi. So as Bellini Etcher finishes the process of flashing, it'll flip from flashing to validating. As soon as it's finished validating, it will eject the SD card. It's safe to take it out of the computer and then put it into the Raspberry Pi. So let's do the hard part, shall we? We're going to take that SD card out of the computer. Out of the reader, SD card, and here it is, SD card, Raspberry Pi. Hard to screw that part up. So we've got that in the Raspberry Pi. The next thing I'm going to do is take the network cable, and I'm just going to plug the network cable into the Raspberry Pi. The last part, power up the Pi. So we're going to take our power cable here, and we're just going to plug that into the Raspberry Pi. That's it. That's all we have to do with the Pi. We'll just make sure the network cable's in there. Um, the SD card was seated. We can see on the back that the Pi is actually connecting. You can see these flashing LEDs here. Again, I've talked about it before. If, if for some reason you get a solid red LED and the green one is not flashing, that means the Raspberry Pi isn't booting. So you have to either reseat the SD card, take it out, put it back in, or unplug the power um, reboot it, take the card right out. If it still doesn't boot and you don't see the uh, flashing green right there, see flashing green? Yep. Um, if you don't see that, then you're gonna have to reflash the SD card. So just go back into Bellina and follow the steps again. And once everything is flashing, booting up, okay, just make sure that your network cable has the flashing network traffic lights on the back. That means it's communicating to the router okay, and you can continue with these steps. So the next step is just finding the IP address of that Raspberry Pi. To do that, there's a few ways. You can check your DHCP table on your router. You can check the DHCP tables on your servers. But there are so many routers and different ways of providing DHCP at the home. One of the easiest, most universal ways is to use Angry IP Scanner. So Angry IP, we're just going to download the 32-64-bit installer. And once that's done, we can just open the installer. The wizard will open up. Um, it's going to prompt for user access control 92% of the time. If it doesn't, you're okay. But you can click yes to that. And then when the installer opens, it's simply click next, yes, finish. And we're going to click run because we want to run Angry P with uh, a scanner anyway. So we'll just open that up. It's easy. Now when you first open it up, we're going to want to change a few things. So we're just going to go in tools and go preferences. We're also going to go scan dead hosts. So we don't want that. We don't want things that aren't on the network. So we're not going to scan dead hosts. We're going to go to display it and we're, we're going to go display a live host. So this will keep, make sure that only things that ping back to angry IP will show on our list. The last thing is the IP. Now yours should fill out just fine. I've got some funky networking going on on my computer, but it should fill out to your local network. And then you can just hit scan. For me, I'm changing this IP address. 
If you want to check and see and make sure that you're scanning the right network locally, you can. Uh, you just have to find your computer's IP address and then you can work out what the range would be. So usually it starts at whatever the first three octets of your IP are with one at the end and then same thing, first three octets of your IP with 254 at the end. So we're just going to hit scan and see what we get. So angry IP will scan your network. It takes a few seconds, but it will. Sometimes it populates host names beside the device. Sometimes they're blank. Now there is a lot of nerdy network to answer the question why they're blank, but that doesn't matter. What we're going to do is sort by IP address. So we can just click the IP column, click sort by IP. We're going to look at the last one because it would have been the last device to join our network, which would have been the one we just plugged in. So as long as nobody else is like plugging a bunch of network stuff in, you're okay. So we know that it's 10.0.0, 0, 0, 2, 4, 5 in my case. So we'll shrink that and we just open a web browser and we type in that IP address into the bar. And here we go. We're at the setup process. The setup is fairly simple and straightforward from here. We're going to use my CR10S as an example, but you can set up any printer even if it's not in the list. Remember, this is just a control interface, so if it doesn't know the exact printer type, there's only one thing that happens and it's not even a big deal. It just doesn't show up in the console as a printer type, so we'll get there. To start with, let's click Begin Setup. We can name it. I'm just going to name it Astrobox because it's going to be the only one on my network right now. But if you had a few, you might want to follow with like one, two, three, four, five at the end there. But we'll just leave it at Astrobox. So next, I'm going to click Internet Setup. But you can see here it gives us a URL we could use to find our Astrobox after we set everything up. So we might want to remember HTTP astrobox.local. Very, very easy. So next, success, it can connect to the internet. We can do this, turn off hotspot when a known network is found. We don't want the hotspot at all. We don't have an extra USB network card, so that's fine to leave that ticked. We're going to click next. In the screen that pops up, we can choose the manufacturer, and there are many. However, some of the manufacturings are lacking choice. So when we look at Anycubic, we only have an i3 Mega, but we know for a fact Anycubic makes an i3 Mega, a Chiron, a Predator, and a few other printers. But let's continue on with our Creality. So we're going to go Creality 3D, and we have our options here. So CR10S. Now, if you have an Ender 3 Pro, just pick Ender 3. It'll be the same bed size, it'll get everything in there for you, but we're just going to pick CR10S. And then we're going to go next to AstroPrint account. So, we talked about this in the AstroPrint plug-on video, but you have to have an AstroPrint account. If you don't have one, click this fancy button that says, I don't have an account, I want to make one, but we have one. So I'm going to type my account name in and my password. Then I'm going to click next. If you're like me and you forget your password a few times, you might want to look at getting LastPass. I have it. It's awesome. We're not sponsored, but it's a great idea. Um, the next part is connect your printer. Now we're going to skip this part for now and we're going to configure it later. So just click skip. Because right now the Raspberry Pi is sitting on my desk, which is way far away from my CR10S in the background. So next we can click start printing. So we can see a few things happen. We get our control panel. Everything up here is happy. We do want to look at the settings really, really quickly before we unplug it and move it over to the printer. So we're going to click the settings gear at the bottom here. And what we get here is the Wi-Fi and internet settings. So we're just going to click internet. We can see that the wireless is not connected. So we're going to scan the Wi-Fi. And I'm going to join my Wi-Fi. So I have uh, my 3D printer Wi-Fi. And then we're going to type in the super secret Wi-Fi password. And then we're going to hit connect.
it'll spin a second, it'll connect. We should see that when this window is finished, we'll have a wireless IP address and a wired IP address, which is what we're aiming for. So we had success. It's amazing. We have our other IP address, or we're connected to wireless. We're just waiting for our IP address to show up, but we can see here that we're connected and connected. So if I were to refresh this page, you can see it comes up and it shows us, yes, I do have an IP address. Take note of that IP address. But remember, we can also go to astroprint.local or astrobox.local as well. But I, I personally like the IP addresses because it's a direct connection to the box when you're local. You don't need to access the Astro Box too much. So now that we're here, we can just make sure everything looks good and it's saved on here. And we're actually going to come up to this button and we're going to hit device shutdown because we're ready to move it to the printer. So once you click shutdown, it'll initiate that process and we can take the Raspberry Pi off power and move it to the printer. Hey guys, it's me. Just want to let you know that that shutdown button is very important for AstroBox. You just don't want to yank the power out and move it. You want to make sure you click that power off button first. It actually doesn't shut the Pi off, but it does stop the operating system. And then you can unplug everything and plug it into your printer. So that's exactly what we're doing here. I'm going to unplug my network cable. I'm going to unplug my power. And now I have my Pi. So I'm going to go hook up my camera and my printer to the Raspberry Pi and then power it up. Gonna power up my Pi. Gonna plug it in the printer. Mm -hmm. Camera, printer. And one power cable. All right, it's all plugged in. So let's jump into the web browser. And by the way, the plugging in printer song, copyrighted. So we've got everything plugged in. Just a PSA for you. If you have carpet or you're wearing like rubber or sandals or something inside that generates static, touch a printer, touch a doorknob before you touch your Raspberry Pi to plug it in. That static can either wreck the board, short the card, it can do all nasty things. If you notice that you plug your Pi in and it was blinking before with the green and red and it stopped, it's probably static. Unplug it, take the card out, plug it back in, put the power back in, you should be good to go. So we've given it a second. We're going to go to our IP address that we know that the Astro Box was. You can see here that it's automatically protected. There is no option to have an unprotected Astro Box. That's why you need a user account. So unlike a Raspberry Pi Octoprint build where you can still get in without a username and password if you choose to bypass that, there's no option on here. So I'm going to type my password into the password field and hit enter. So now the Astro Box is communicating with the Astro Print cloud. So what, do, what does that actually mean? Well, if I go to the cloud and I sign in instead of download, so that's just in the top right hand corner there, and I'm just gonna type my email address in and my password. You can also use SSO, single sign-on services, with Microsoft and Google to make your account if you don't want to remember more passwords. But I'm going to click sign in. I, I'm going to leave remember me on because that's fine. Um, they do uh, ask for donations if you want to. And you can for sure do it if you want. But we'll just go to our dashboard for now. Now we can see this is the online dashboard. And then, wait for it, here's the offline dashboard. So this is our local instance that we can get to no matter what. So you can see there's a fewer options here, but the ones you do get differ from the cloud slightly. For example, in the cloud, you do have monitor, design library, a lot of the same functionality, but you also get the Thingiverse plugins, the My Mini Factory search plugins, and the store icon. Now, when you go back to the local one, you get a few of those, but you can see that you can actually upload a file directly to the printer. So if for some reason you did lose your internet connection, you can still hop on your Astro Box, upload a file and print. So before we get too far into it, we're gonna click settings. And the reason is, is our printer is not connected. We can see up here, it's a red printer. Sometimes it's a little flashing gray printer and that means it's trying to connect. But if we go to the settings window, so you can get that from the gear down on the menu bar, or 
We'll just go back home and we can get it from the settings box. It's fairly simple to get there. Once we get there, we're greeted with this screen. It should auto detect your baud rate, but remember most standard Creality boards are 115 200. Uh, if you've custom built your board or firmware, it might be up at the 25, uh, 250,000, sorry, baud rate there. So I'm just going to hit connect because I happen to know that's right for mine, but it should have scanned it. As soon as I hit connect, we see connected to printer and it's up here stops being read. We can go on the side and see, oh, hey, yeah, that's our CR10S profile. We set that up during the start process. Now, if you do not have an all metal hot end, bump this number down to 240 and the bed is never ever going to get to 140 degrees on a CR10S unless you've modified it or the firmware because the firmware will time out and thermal run away before it'll get there. So I usually set this one at around 100. It's still higher than it'll get to. I do have an all metal hot end system so I'm going to set mine to 300. Everything else on here is fine. It's normal. The CR10S will take it. It's set it up already. We can see here that there's no filament for our printer yet, and that's okay. We talk about setting up filament and those other settings in the other Astro print video we did. So by all means, take along with that one. But it's very, very quick. You can just select a color, you can name it, and it's loaded with PLA. We hit save. And you can see where we can edit that in the other video. Again, we talked about presets. And in the other video, but you can set your pre-warm temperatures and print temperatures for warming up your bed to start with here. The only other thing we really have to set up is the camera. We want to make sure that it's working. So it's found my HD camera, the C615. Um, it's a USB camera. Everything here is okay. If you're like me and you're a snob and you like high def, that's fine. Now, if you're going to run high def video, make sure you have a Raspberry Pi 3 or even better, a Raspberry Pi 4. The Raspberry Pi 3As and the Zeros just aren't big enough to provide full resolution at HD, so you're going to want to keep them lower. However, they do work. They're just a little bit slower to the get-go. So we're just going to hit save here. And now we're still on our local instance, so we're going to go back to the dashboard. So. This is the dashboard on the local. We're going to click terminal. In the terminal, we can see that it's outputting our bed temperatures. If we were to run an M503 and hit send, it'll show us our printer stats. Everything's there, just like the OctoPrint terminal. So the terminal is fairly robust in AstroBox, and we're going to go home again. You can click the waffles, you can click the top box, there's even the sidebar that brings up the home and the dashboard. So the next thing is the monitor. We're just going to check that our camera is working. So the video stream is off right now, so by default the stream isn't always streaming. This helps save on network load to the cloud. So if you hit start video streaming, it'll spin for a second and then you'll get your camera feed. And you can see here it's kind of dark and grainy. Now that could be one of two things going on. So let's pop back into, we'll stop the stream and then we'll pop back into our settings very, very quickly to the image. And we're going to change one thing. So we're going to change the video output from H.264 to VP8 and save. Now we're going to go back to the dashboard. Now it's notable that we can go here as well for the camera in the task bar to get to that tab or from the camera widget, whichever you prefer. We hit start streaming. It will prepare the video and it's still kind of grainy. So it's not a whole lot better with the other video encoder but it is uh, visible and you can see it. So this is the local AstroBox instance. Essentially, you don't visit this page unless you need to do like the G-code terminal or edit the settings of the AstroBox directly. Everything's going to be done through your AstroPrint dashboard in the cloud. So let's look at that. We've already talked about setting up Thingiverse with it. We've talked about the design library. We've talked about slicer settings in the other video. So let's just look at the monitor tab. It changes a little bit from how we were using it with Octoprint. So when we click here on this Launch 
Astro Box button, it will actually open that local instance and then you can manage it locally. It will only open this if you are at home. So if you're sitting at a remote location and click that button, you do not have inward access to this Astro Box. So local access only. The next thing we can do is camera and control. So the first one is a still. So you can see here that the camera is set on this little still guy. And it will take a picture. It takes a second or two to load, but there's our picture. The next thing, and sometimes this is a got you based on camera quality when you set it up in the Astro Box, but we're gonna flip it to video and we're gonna hit go. So what should happen is we see a happy monkey and a rotating face and everything's hunky-dory. It takes a few seconds and the video will load. Let's see if this happens. Success. We have success. We can see our camera. Everything is good up there. It's good to note too that if you leave this page, you have to restart your camera stream. And the other cool thing about this is in the app, you can watch the video now and the still images. So this really gives you good control if you're printing a long job and not on site. If you want reliability of the SD card and the printer not burning out over those print jobs, you can use this Astro Box method perfectly. It's worth noting that underneath too, you can preheat your bed and your hot end. So if you click edit, you can put in a temperature in here. And if the printer is on, it will rise to the tar target temperature and be ready to print. So that's AstroBox. If you want to use more than two printers in your farm, the cost is $15 American. For me, I'm not going to go out and spend a lot of money on something that I can manage with OctoPrint. But for mobilizing your small print army in a hurry, if you're only connecting two printers, this is a great option. We can use it to control from outside, we can use it to control securely, and we can monitor it with an app developed by the team on your mobile device. So it's simple to use, it's simple to set up. The cost of setting it up is about half as much as buying it from them. And keep in mind when you buy an Astro Box, you still have to get a subscription. Um, it's fairly universal. So, you guys are awesome, thanks if you've made it this far. We appreciate you. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos around. We hope you all are staying safe right now. And until next time, have a good one.